Good morning. Today I spotlight a no holds barred roundtable with members of the new Michigan Media Group, representing the Arab American News, the Michigan Chronicle, Latino, the Korean Weekly, and Wayne State University. What do they all have in common, and where do they stand on today's hot button news stories? It's Sunday, September the 3rd. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. And welcome to Spotlight as we uh, kick off September, the first Sunday in September, right around the corner, Labor Day. We've got a big crew this morning. Welcome to Spotlight. I don't think we've ever had a crew this big on Spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's begin. New Michigan Media. Haig, Keita, uh, you've been on before, but update everybody. Um, what's going on? What kind of partnerships you have underway that are relevant to all the people at home? Well, you know, New Michigan Media is, is really, truly a unique collaboration. We've been uh, working together for about 10 years now. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And nationally, there is no other association of this sort where the largest ethnic and minority publishers' papers come together to collaborate. Um, and, and actually, collaboration, I think it's worth mentioning, is, is one of the directions that journalism is looking at, um, how to create greater sort of synergy and resources by by news organizations working together and um, and we're one of the original sort of groups doing this and this year we're also part of the Detroit Journalism Cooperative uh, that that includes um, WDET, Michigan Radio, Bridge Magazine and Detroit Public Television um, and there we're collaborating with a different group and sharing stories and reporters doing beats together um, it, it is a different model of how uh, we can do better journalism and and survive as 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 an industry. Kita, <coughs> what we're saying, you're new to New Michigan Media. Um, what's your role, and how do you feel about this? Well, my role is digital engagement slash community manager, and really what that is is bringing the interactive new media component to the newspapers, and that's basically getting them involved on social, being that community voice online, and in this new digital world that you know journalism is approaching and people you know that's where journalism is moving to so with these papers safe to say help them reach out to millennials absolutely okay <laughs> help, the, well. help the old guys reach the young people <laughs> yes, right yes, yes. <laughs> so that's a part of it and just being actively engaged in their communities and going through and best practices and things of that nature so that they are that community voice outside of just that newspaper but also online and in those social channels as well. All right, we're gonna talk about some hot button issues in a little bit, but before that, uh, just get you guys to weigh in. Uh, we're hearing the word fake news a lot <laughs> these days. Um, are you guys engaged in fake news? Are we <clears throat> all involved in fake news? Well, okay. and, is, uh, and is that charge from President Trump, is it working? It's certainly working with his base, but is it working with the rest of America and in the middle of America? <clears throat> well, first, first of all, who are you calling old? <laughs> <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the only one with the gray hair. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm old. <laughs> yeah, like, all right. Well, I, I refuse to admit. Anyway, um, fake news. You know, yesterday, um, I think on The Wire, uh, there was a um, uh, news about, real news, about uh, the United Nations human rights chief coming out and calling uh, Donald Trump a, a reckless driver because he is calling uh, the, uh, you know, he is attacking freedom of speech, freedom of press, when he calls, you know, New York Times, ABC News, NBC, CNN, fake news and the Washington Post, he is actually attacking the freedom of press, which is which we brag in this country about protecting. And I think that uh, uh, he, he goes further, the chief uh, of human rights at the United Nations, saying that, uh, uh, that Donald Trump is like driving a bus. You know, he's driving this world. He's the leader of the free world and like he's driving a bus, but he is a reckless driver. I think it makes it dangerous for certain in certain angles. As that, once again, when you're talking about his base, when you're talking about the people who subscribe to that, I mean, of course, you remember during the campaign, uh, he would pretty much just corral the journalists in one, you know, one area, then make sure everybody looked at him and, and jeered, et cetera. And when you, and when you, when you gin it up that high, um, that causes problems automatically. And I think that that, but that is all part of the show for him. That's part of the circus. That's what, that's what he does. I think that 
But in terms of getting to a point where it's over, you know, not it's too dangerous to be involved. No, you know, I think that when you're talking about fake, are we involved in fake news? Well, to me, I've, I've been, I'm one of the ones who says there's no such thing as fake news. There's news, and then there's and then there's lies. You know, you know, if you tell it's fake news, then that's purposeful to charge what pres what the president is doing. He's basically charging us and saying that we are purposefully misrepresenting lying. the right line. And I would argue that the you know, the reverse, you know, look in the mirror. <laughs> you know, the rever the re reverse is obviously true. But you know, in our hey, community, hey, hang on yeah. one second. <clears throat> Got to slip a break in here. When we come back, we'll find out what's on your mind as well as the rest of you have you weigh in on this, as well as some of the key issues that we've been reporting on the news, whether it's the hurricane or it's immigration or it's police, race relations. We'll try to tackle it all. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Spotlight. Uh, I have members of the New Michigan Media seated here. One key person is not here, Arthur Horwitz, publisher of the Jewish News. He's been on Spotlight before. Last time he was on, he was talking about the 75th anniversary of the Jewish News and a special publication that they put out. If you haven't gotten it, make sure you go pick up a copy. Uh, it is tremendous history about uh, the Jewish community in this area and all the contributions that it, uh, it has made throughout 75 years and beyond here. Um, so he had a conflict, couldn't be with us today, wanted to be with us. We'll get him next time. Hey, I interrupted um, you. I just wanted to say that uh, in terms of fake news, the ethnic media are the most trusted news sources for their own communities. Why is that? Well, they are from the communities. Mm -hmm. They uh, understand their communities better than anyone. They're they trusted. Are, they trust all of you all more than they do the major dailies. I think, we, I, I think that's fair to say. And, and, not and that's only, based upon research. That's not my opinion. That's research that you all have done. You know, and, and in addition, um, you know, the, the newspapers, the publishers are often activist voices for their communities. Uh -huh. They are the ones who talk about the community's issues to a broader audience as well. And both in their individual persons as representatives, as well as through their newspapers, they are the ones who, who showcase or show the community to itself and to the outside world. Uh, what are you hearing from your community and where in the world are we headed? Well, we, the story is a little bit more exaggerated here in the United States uh, than it is in South Korea uh, because um, it is a political battle between two countries. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think it, it's not more than that. Um, my family is in South Korea is not really worried about this at all. Because uh, they are, they are not. Why not? Because we know that they are bluffing each other. While North Korea cannot attack United States, because <coughs> if they do, then it will be the last day of North Korea. The Trump administration cannot attack North Korea because we have 50 million South Korean people within the the range of the North Korean missile. So is this two countries bluffing each other, or is this two world leaders bluffing leaders each bluffing other? Leaders bluffing each other. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, the, well, North, we know exactly what North Korea wants to achieve from this uh, political battle. What is it North Korea well, wants? Well, they want the security of their regime. If, if imagine that North, if North Korea do, does not have the nuclear weapon, maybe the the U.S. and South Korean ally could wipe them out. That's what they think. Mm -hmm. Even though we deny that, uh, that's, they, they do not believe what we say. Iraq is an example. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, so <coughs> they, it is their survival skill uh, strategy. While the Obama admi administration were ignoring uh, the North Korean issue for a long time, even though we supported Obama, 75% of um, uh, Korean American people voted for Obama because he thought. He, he said he, he was going to meet the North Korean leader without, without any uh, condition, but he didn't do anything. So, do you, do you think President Trump is taking the right approach on this? Well, we, we call it bluffing, because if, even though he's claiming that he, he has all kinds of options on his table, the peace talk will be the only option, we think, because, again, we cannot do any kind of military action well, against North Korea. But is the tough talk from our president, is that necessary to be able to create dialogue 
and the peace talks. Well, if somebody else is working behind the scene, behind him, mm -hmm. to open that dialogue, then maybe his bluffing is going to work. So kind of good cop, bad cop but, between, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, between what President Trump is doing and what Secretary of State Tillerson is doing? Right, but, but if the President Trump is, is representing good side of the world, not for the, the evil side, then he should respect the lives of other countries as well. How big of a concern is it that we may be dealing with two, quote unquote, unstable leaders? Well, if, if they are concerning about the innocent people <coughs> in, in North Korea and in South Korea, uh, the bluffing is bluffing. I, I think they should end the bluffing and then sit together and talk things out. And because because we there there we can do we can give out what they want and we can we can achieve what we want. All right, need to get another break in there, Elias. We're coming to you right out of the break. <laughs> we'll be right back and find out what the readers of Latino are talking about. We'll be right back. Stay with you. Welcome back to Spotlight. Okay, Elias Gutierrez, I have not forgotten about you down there. Uh, all sorts of hot button issues that I got to believe Latinos have been talking about, whether it's immigration, it's the hurricane in Texas, uh, it's the president now saying we need uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars to help rebuild Texas. By the same token, he's been talking about uh, building the wall. So now Congress has to make some tough decision. He says that he wants to lower the corporate tax. Um, these are big decisions. What's going to come first and what are you talking about and what are you concerned with? <clears throat> uh, you know, Chuck. Um, and the pardon of uh, Sheriff Arpaio. I'm sorry, what? And the pardon of Sheriff Arpaio as well. You know, um, the, uh, I start with the fake news you asked before. Uh -huh. before um, the fake news in the Hispanic media, Hispanic community, we don't live in, the, in this uh, in this world. The fake news is around only the ego for Donald Trump. Uh, or um, Hispanic media, we cover more important issues about the hurricane, about the immigration, about all the issues we have right now. Um, and that's their concern. This is our not concern. charges of fake news. Okay. Exactly. And um, in uh, we're concerned right now about the immigration, and we we have. <coughs> Uh, dreamers in this country, the, the younger coming with the father, younger, and this uh, young people, the students, we have around 800, 900,000 in the country, and um, it, this is one big issue right now in the community. Let, let me ask you, um, I remember Governor Snyder, Mayor Duggan, a couple years ago, big push for immigration, saying that is a way to regrow Detroit and regrow this region. Um, by the same token, we've had the president taking some strong stances about immigration. Um, who are you all siding with? This is contra it's contradiction, but the, the state, they have the lower uh, employment right now, 3.7. And we need people in, in this state. We need uh, uh, immigrant for work. And this is contradiction, how the economy support in three, four more years uh, many jobs in this place. So, big contradiction, but I know the mayor and, and, and the governor want an immigrant, but for the other, f the other side, the new uh, president don't no want an immigrant, but this state need an immigrant, the city need an immigrant. We lost many people, many population from the city of Detroit. Is every day the president changing his mind and on, also is changing his staff. I mean, look at the White House in six months. Uh, n no one that came in with the president to the White House that's still in the White House. I mean, we have, we have uh, you know, a uh, revolving door in the White House. Uh, we have a, an administration that's not stable. Uh, we have even Republicans and the uh, major Republican players uh, in, the, in the Senate and in the House criticizing the president silently more than probably publicly. But I think that, uh, that the president has a problem with his party. Uh, coming 2018, the midterm election, 
there will be a lot of departure from Trump's uh, administration policies uh, because people are going to be jumping ship. Otherwise, they would be sinking uh, and, and, and drowning in the, in the political uh, arena because the, 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 elect and the votes are not there to support the Republican agenda at this time, leaded, led by this President uh, Trump. All right, we know, we know he ran into problems with health care and the Congress. Will he, get, uh, will he get the wall built? Will he get his tax policy through? No, he doesn't have, any, he doesn't have the support. As, as Osama was saying, the problem is, is that he's, he no longer has the faith of his own party. Okay, I mean, and, and in addition to... He's in lost a, the Republican Party. He's lost the Republican Party, in addition to his incompetence. I mean, he, he's... Did he ever have the Republican Party? No, I think they went, once he got elected, I mean, I think they, they, his party wanted to give him, I'm talking about in, in the in this Congress, they wanted to give him a chance. I mean, I think, if nothing else, and be able to at least rubber stamp what they wanted to get done. But at this point, like, as they say, the people are jumping ship so far. I mean, he, they don't... Um, some of the people, the strongest folks that he needed, Mitch McConnell, they haven't spoken in months. Um, and he need, and he doesn't have anybody on the floor to really help him push the agenda. So at this point, the people that he needs to advance whatever his agenda is, which is, even that's not really clear, there's there's nothing there. It's pretty much chaos. I mean, so I, I don't really see how anything's really going to get through. He doesn't him. know how to be a president. He probably knows how to be a CEO, maybe a, a reality show uh, star, but not a president. Uh, the president lead. He's not leading. He's challenging all the time. He is in, instigating fights. And even with his own party, the last few days, he was attacking party leaders, you know, in the Congress. He was calling on them in, in, in public. Uh, the, the president is not acting as a president. Six months into his, uh, or seven months into his administration, in the first year of his four years, he is campaigning again. So he is not really acting as a president. He's still acting as a candidate and doesn't know how to be a president. All right, they're telling me I've got to get another break in here. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about Middle East and your region. And I want to talk about millennials and how they are taking in all this news. And one question I want all of you to answer. Should we rename Cobo Hall? We'll be right back. Stay. Kita, what are you hearing from uh, the millennials? What are they most concerned with? How are they viewing it, whether it's, uh, it's local, state, it's national? I think especially with the millennial audience, it's really about student loan debt and the education, that's around education policy surrounding this administration. You, we carry the highest student loan debt that the nation has ever seen. So when you think about that and all of the inconsistency with the educational policy right now in D.C. with Trump and his administration. It's a lot of worry on that side. So you see a lot of people concerned there, a little hesitation going into, you know, going to college or what what route the millennial will take mm -hmm. moving forward. It's how will the, the repayment look? Bread and butter issues. Absolutely. You know, how far can they stretch their dollar? Absolutely. OK, yeah. insurance, car yeah. insurance. Yes especially in the city of Detroit and things of that nature, and health insurance, of As course. As we try to regrow our city. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Chuck, so can, okay, Chuck, can yeah. before you get it, just one, one quick word in. Yeah. I want to make sure that I mention that, that Kita's position is, is being funded for us through the Ford Foundation, as okay. well as with support from the Knight Foundation and the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. Okay. So I just wanted to say we appreciate the kind of support that we've seen from the world of foundations for the kind of work that we do. And we thank for it, and that's very, very important. And they're a good local corporate uh, sponsor, even though they have <coughs> tentacles that go across the world. <laughs> they take care of home first, so we appreciate it. Osama Sablani, very quickly, uh, key issues that the Arab American community is well, most concerned with as now. you know we are we you know the the, the fight against isis uh, in, in the middle east is being won uh, slowly are we winning yes i think i think we are winning i think the 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 people in the in the uh, in the arab world and specifically in in lebanon syria and iraq they have been really uh, defeating ISIS and, and uh, gaining ground. Uh, uh, I, and I think this is one of the positive things that I can, uh, I can give to Donald Trump, the president, uh, for, for him being involved in the Middle East in this fashion, uh, you know, not supporting the terrorists, not going around and, and saying that we need to change regimes. Uh, I, I really believe that the Middle East 
uh, is getting the situation in the Middle East is getting better. Uh, now, of course, Afghanistan is a different story. I disagree with the president on uh, increasing, you know, the level of troops in, in, in the region there in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a major, major problem for the United States. It's the longest military conflict in the history of the United States, you know, and, and I think that we should be uh, getting out of Afghanistan. All right. This president has been a very strong uh, in terms of Israel, uh, support for Israel. Uh, is that what's new? All the presidents are like this, you know. Okay. And right. I think I think the situation in the Middle East uh, is not going to be resolved uh, in, in this uh, and under this administration. As far as the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, it's going to continue to brew, and this is the origin of all the conflicts in the region. And I think that uh, if the president wants really to do something in the Middle East, he should address the Israeli-Palestinian issue. <laughs> all right, Keith Owens, we are in the midst of a mayoral election, also a city clerk election. Uh, race seems to be uh, an issue that is being raised, whether it's legitimate or not, is certainly out there on the table. Anything in particular that we ought to be concerned with as we watch this race unfold and next year gubernatorial race? I think in the, in the mayoral race, I think it'll be very interesting to watch. I think that, um, I mean, race comes in and it's, been, it's always been an issue with Detroit, et cetera. And when you're talking about this, you know, the son of the late Coleman A. Young, and that that's being used as one thing in terms of whether or not there's a concern among some Detroiters whether or not I mean is, are we still holding on or are we losing to Detroit? Detroit? I mean you know are, are, you know, we've got a white mayor we've got so now we're losing control and that's being hyped a lot I think so I think that we'll we'll see that I, whether I don't think that will determine the race um, um, the mayoral race I think that um, Mayor Duggan's you know uh, think they're going to vote more on city services or yes, will they vote yes yeah that's going to be the that, that's going to be the determining factor you know I, I think that that that's not going to determine the race at all and I think and also and you mentioned the city clerk's race. I actually think in some ways that'll be a, a, in some ways more interesting race to watch. I mean, that, you know, when you look at uh, Garland Gilchrist, who during the polling had 2%, but then walk, walked out with 19% and went past, you know, head to wheel. And I think that that's, it'll be a very interesting thing, race going on and there. And challenging incumbent Janice right, Winfrey. Just All right. Just going to go down the line. Uh, should Cobo Hall be renamed as Mayor Duggan and others are suggesting? Elias, yes or no? Well, um... Yes or no? <laughs> My op uh, opinion is uh, we need a, a good name, historical name. Okay, what would it be? Joe Luis. Joe Luis. Okay. Joe Luis is the best. All right. Keith Owen? I'm with Elias. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, like <laughs> Joe Lewis. All right, Haig? Yes, just because something is old doesn't make it better. Um, I think in this case, uh, because it, it, it had the connotations that the word brings, it should change. There's no reason not to change it. All right, Keita? I agree, yes. All right. So well, Cobor is a very famous name for um, all the companies, uh, Asian-owned companies outside of the, this country. So I just want to stay as it is. Stay as it, it is. doesn't really matter what you call it. They're going to continue to call it Cobo Hall for the next 20 years. <laughs> 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 all right. We want to thank you all for joining us today on Spotlight. Happy Labor Day to all of you. Have a safe Labor Day. And we want to thank you at home for joining us. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week.